Chapter 36 You are now listening to The Chapter of the Architect with DJ Architect. What's going on, my peoples? This is your host once again, DJ Architect, in the studio with us today, our special co-host, Big Burgers, and his wife, Carol. How you guys doing? Wonderful. Yourself? Good. Trying to get adjusted to this spring forward hour. We're losing an hour of sleep. I had to wake up an hour earlier. Uh, I was up late last night. It was 2 o'clock. I look at the time, and uh, I look at the, the, the clock on my oven and my microwave and it says two o'clock and then I look at the watch, uh, my phone clock and it's three o'clock and I'm like, oh, I got to get my ass to the rack. I got a podcast to do tomorrow in the morning. Yeah. So I try to shoot you guys a a text message, burgers, and let you know, hey, man, I forgot about the time change. Can we make it at 12 instead of 11? I take a shower. I go downstairs and there you guys uh, are conversing with my wife and I'm like, all right, let's let's get it cracking. Yeah. <laughs> How you guys been? Straight. I've been Chilling. straight, man. Hey, so you you guys got some uh, some news, man. Some sad news for the listeners. You guys are uh, well. I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys tell it. Uh, yeah, man. We have plans here in the near uh, future to move back east. Um, up in Vermilion, Ohio, man. Right mm. there by the water, by uh, San, in San, it's close to Sandusky, Cedar Point, the amusement park. It's probably about five, six hours from New York, right across the uh, Lake Erie to Canada. So, okay. yes, yeah, I mean, you, we've been looking it up online, and it looks like a, a spot. So, why why do you choose that location in particular? I wanted to be by the water. Ah, uh, so so you're you're all for it, Carol? Oh yeah, I want yeah. Four Seasons. Nice, real Four you know, Seasons. Uh, the season, the weather here in California, I'm not going to lie to you, is beautiful. Here we are in the month of March. Yes. And you can walk out with cargo shorts and a short sleeve t-shirt and you're fine. But there is something about, and I'm not saying about the, the winter storms. I don't miss that. But it, it's something nice about the fall season, the changing in the leaves and the, the, uh, the colors and being able to bust out some clothing that you really can't do other times of the year. You could bust out, you know, your leather jackets, your yes. hoodies, your shirlings. Uh, and, you know, here, it unfortunately, it, you can only do that on, on really, really cold evenings or cold mornings. Uh, but by midday, you're, all right, time to take it off. But listen, from the bottom of my heart, I'm happy for you guys. I know California is a an expensive state to live in. Uh, my wife and I, we've been having talks uh, of, of possibly moving out of state when we're getting close to retiring, and you guys are doing it now, so I applaud you. I'm happy for you guys at the same time. I, I'm going to miss you guys truly. Burgers, you and I, we've been hanging tough since... 2001. 2001. Yeah. Uh, one way or the other, we've always ended up in the same town for whatever reason. Yeah. I would pop up or you would pop up. Hey, I'm, I'm living here. Well, I, hey, I'm five minutes away. What's up? Oh, yeah. You right? moved out to Vista. You was like, hey, I'm in Vista. I'm like, Vista where? I'm in Vista. Right. He was like right, right across the bridge. Right across the bridge from the highway. Right, because uh, you had just came back from a deployment and I was mm-hmm. already, I think that's around the time when my Achilles was torn, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was because I stayed in those apartments over there, right across mm. from when you stayed across the freeway. Right. And then I I had gotten out. You were still in. You had, I believe, uh, you were away at a deployment. You came back, and I, I recall we were emailing each other. Oh, you had mentioned that you had lived in here in, in this new location. And I was like, hey, I just bought a house in that same oh, location yeah, and we're like oh man here we go again the party continues on <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah because you was like yeah i'm staying right here i'm like i'm right by the casino and you was yeah. like i'm on the other side of the casino right. and i'm like what yeah party time it is my yeah. brother uh-huh so yeah I, we, you know we we have a, a, a long history together I, I hate to see both of you guys go but it's it's something that it's going to make you guys happy the better uh life conditions uh Probably, but either ways, I'm happy for. No, I won't say all that because it's cold as hell. But well, 
Well, but either way, you know look, man, if you're moving, it's, it's for a positive purpose. It know, is. Right? So for that, yes. uh, we can go ahead and, and, and toast to that. Nonetheless, once again, I'm going to miss you guys very, very much. And, and everything that you guys brought to the podcast, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt. Cool. Uh, Thank you. No worries. What's going on with, with Trump and his people abandoning ship <laughs> left and right? What's, what's the deal? Oh, it's a big web. And I'm thinking nobody else wants to get caught up in it. Good point. Web of lies. I would. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. That's crazy. President Trump. What's going on with this, this porn star scandal? Oh, that's right. What's going on with that man? I don't well, know. I don't. I don't know, man. <clears throat> I try to stay away from social media as much as possible. Being honest, man. You, you know. know that dude paid old girl off, right? Yeah. Because there's a gag order on her, right? And so in order for that to have happened, she yeah, had it. to have agreed to something and signed off on it. And I was watching Bill Maher this coming uh, this past Friday. And apparently that whole contract may be thrown out the window because the dummy forgot to sign it. The Who's dummy, the dummy? The dummy oh, being Trump. Trump. He forgot to sign the document. Are you serious? Yeah. So she's <laughs> trying to come out and tell the world, yeah, this dude's got, you know, he's got a midget dick. Oh, right? it's a midget dick? He got a, <laughs> I don't know. He got a I baby know, but she, dick. She wants to talk about it. Oh, she wants is that to talk the, is about that, is that She the, wants to gag order, and she's not. She oh. is not suing for money. She is suing for the right to uh, to eradicate the gag order and tell the world pretty much to get you know, hey, this our president, you know, gets down with porn stars and then pays them off right before the election so they don't defamate his character. You know wow. What I mean? Now is that the the young lady that's locked up in jail? Because I heard a story no, about no. In... Oh, okay. No, uh, this is a porn star, I believe, by the name of Stormy Daniels. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh. <clears throat> I was on a different story. But the one that's uh, where is she? Thailand or right? That's the one I'm talking about. This what? is a whole nother story, and I didn't hear about this. Enlighten me, please. She Russian was all chick. Kinds of it shit. was a Russian chick. And what did she do? She knows she, everything. She knows, like, everything, and now she's in a Thailand jail. Oh, no She knows way. all the dirt. And so I, her life expectancy is probably going to run out soon, you know what I mean? Because oh, she man. was, like, literally, like, I know X, X, Y, Z. I know the alphabet on everything. So. Man, the American government is telling the the officers over there, hey, uh, fish heads and rice, nothing else. Yep, fish heads <laughs> and rice, yeah. Man, that's sad. That's sad. Uh, but yeah, man, his his people Just uh, 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 are leaving him left and right, man, left and right. A toxic, toxic cabinet. Anyways, let's let's move on uh, from that garbage to something else. Hey guys, I know we always end up talking about this particular topic: kids, their attitudes, some of the 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 things that they do, their impatience, their incompetence. You said you had a story, Big Burgers. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, man. What's this the, what? is a, this was about a week ago, <clears throat> and I was uh, I think me and Carol went up to L.A. or something. We did something. We stayed in a hotel room for the night. Uh, I had to see a family member, so uh, I needed to talk to him. And they they was like, "We need you here." You know, we talked whatever we need to talk about. And so I'm out there, um, smoking a cigarette, mm. and I see the cops pull up, mm -hmm. and I'm like, mm -hmm. "What?" Well, they can't be looking for me. You know what I mean? Next thing I know, um, they escorting this, this younger gentleman, white gentleman, out of uh, out of the car and bringing him in a hotel lobby. They had to escort him to his room. So I'm like, all right. And they had a bar in the hotel, so I went back inside. I have a drink or whatever. And now the same young kid, the cops leave. I see him go outside to smoke, I guess, or whatever he was doing out there. And, you know, about an hour passed and he was out there. So he was probably up in his room or whatever he was doing for a little while. And I went outside to smoke a cigarette. This guy right here ran up on me, like, within one arm's distance. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. he was, like, real close to me. And I'm like, what? First thing out of his mouth, hey, you got a 20 sack? <laughs> oh, like, he was, like weed. he was selling weed. Yeah, and I was like, I said, you know what, <clears throat> motherfucker? People like you get robbed because you don't even know me and you up here talking about you want a 20 sack. So somebody make you show rabbit ears like give me all your dough since you want to be stupid, right? 
So we continue to talk. You got to smoke. I say, yeah, I got you, but I ain't got the weed, you know. I give him the smoke. We light up. We start talking. And then he start talking about how everybody's against him and all this stupid shit. And I'm Tupac ain't dead and oh, this Biggie ain't crazy. dead. And he just crazy. I've been listening to, to Die and Live in L.A., Tupac this, Tupac that. And I'm like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? He said, well, everybody thinks you're crazy. I'm crazy. I said, motherfucker, you, you sound are. crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Literally, I said that to his face. Mm. I mean, I was giving him the raw. Mm. And I left him with some pretty, I can't remember verbatim what I said. But when he started going on with his, so, uh, his story, I'm like, dude, this, this dude might be a little off. Mm. I said, you've been smoking might. meth or something? Might. Right. Mm. And then next thing you know, you know, he go back to the Tupac thing. I've been in this hotel for three days. My parents don't want me, and they don't want me to come back to the house. I'm 24 years old, and I still stay in a basement. And I'm, I'm I looking at this him guy. Back at the house either. And I'm looking, looking at him like, whose fault is that? Look, so I can't remember verbatim what I said, but this this conversation lasted lasted probably about an hour, 45. I'll give it 45 minutes. And I said, you know what? I came to a conclusion on my end of this situation, brother. What your problem is? Yeah, I said, you know what the fucking problem is? I'm your Dr. Burgers. He right, is. so I was I was a therapist that night, you know what I mean? And I'm, and I'm like, you know what your problem is? I said, you blaming everything on everybody else. You need to look in the fucking mirror and point that finger and see who really is fucking up. Because I don't think it's your family. You just been fucking up. Well, I need the weed, man. I need the weed. I said, oh, you don't need the weed. God. I said, get out of here, man. Mm. And it was just, it was a crazy. I wish I, I wish somebody would record that because I, I said a lot more than that, but I can't remember at this time, brother. So I'll end you with that. That's that's crazy. And then the next day, this is even crazier. I went outside in the morning to smoke a cigarette. Guess who's out there? Oh boy, homeboy chilling. <laughs> hey, guess what he said? I got a, I got a, a business. I'm about to go cop a Camaro. And I look at this dude, I'm like, what you mean? You, He said, I'm going to get it without a job. I said, how? He said, I got a business card. <laughs> and he said some other shit. And I, look, I was like, why would you even get a Camaro, man? You're going to probably kill yourself because you out of your mind. And just the way we know Captain Howdy moves, he'll make sure that loan gets approved because this kid is about to join him in hell. <clears throat> wow. You see what I'm saying? I don't, Carol, what do you think old boy's thought process? What do you think of that? Oh, I don't. I think he's doing something else besides weed. He has got to be. He's got to be. That dude's crazy is what he is. Yeah. He's crazy. He's he's off the hook. Yeah, he's crazy is what it is. So this is so this is what we're talking about. We're talking about I mean, I, to me he just he sounds like he's has some mental emotional issues going on, right? Yes. Yeah. But now once again, man, so we're talking about the situations where these kids Making these dumbass, dumbass statements, these dumbass actions. Uh, you guys heard about? I think I don't know if I we spoke about it last time. The Tide Pod Challenge. The what? The, the Tide Pod Challenge. What the no. hell is that? <clears throat> they're putting Tide Pods. You know these. Yeah. They're putting them in their mouths. No. Yeah, man, and they're challenging themselves to see who does it, who doesn't. I mean, we was stupid growing up. We was stupid to the fact where. We would ride around on bicycles, no helmets, punch each other in the face and see, you know, play cops and robbers playing bicycles, right? Right, right yeah. J uh, making a ramp and damn near breaking our necks. Yeah. We were stupid in that type of manner. Man, but that was just fun. Right. <laughs> Big ass ramp, like six hey. center blocks and shit. <laughs> you know what, man? As much as I love electronic consoles, because I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm an avid player, there was nothing better in our childhood than to go outside in the backyard or go to our neighbor's backyard or th two or three blocks down the road to someone's backyard and and play killer man dodgeball football Rough kick and ball. tumble yeah um you know what i mean when you was a little kid have your little uh your little girl uh, 
the girls, uh, you know, in the neighborhood and play uh, seven, seven Seconds of Heaven. I don't know if you guys ever played that. <laughs> Sound like how I'm going to get it to me. What the hell? Well, we to, well, well. <laughs> we used to play how I'm going to get it, man. Not how I'm going to see. How about Batman and <laughs> Robin, for God's yeah, sake? Yeah, I mean, but you, but see, that's the thing. The thing was, was <clears throat> when you, you could tell when a chick liked you mm. because she would like whisper in your ear. Oh, um, Lord. And tell you, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be over here. Yeah. And I used to play, oh, oh uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, I'm coming for your ass. Cha, 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 cha. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get it. That okay, was my wait. shit. I want to know what they're doing with the Tide They're just pods. putting them in, the, in their mouths, right? And doing what? Spitting uh, them out? I, I, I don't know. if. Oh, well, apparently some idiots are swallowing the detergent. And oh. they're having to be rushed to the hospital. Oh, Tide Pods. Yes, yeah. Tide Pods, yes. Is oh. my accent that bad, y'all guys? No, 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 no. That goes in the laundry. Right, I right. know what you're talking yeah. about. Little packet joints yeah. wrapped in plastic. So I, I dare you to, I dare you to go ahead. This is the challenge. Back in the days, and and you know, I've had conversations with some some friends, and back in the days, there were pedophiles, and there were people. The world was dangerous. Period. Cocaine existed. LS, LSD existed. All that bu- guns existed when we were. All that shit existed. I think the only difference now is because of social media and how the news is is just shotgunned out to the world. It's more apparent of the crimes, the criminals, the events, everything that's negative in the world. It's sometimes I'm gonna be honest with you. My wife and I will be in the evening. We'll we'll watch the news. And it gets so negative, we just turn right. the channel. It is. Because it's, it is depressing. just... Depressing. Thank you. Perfect word. Depressing. But what I'm trying to say is all these negative things, all these idiots, these assholes, these pedophiles, they existed back when we were growing up. Yeah. No, nothing has really changed except for how social media has become so in our face. Right. So because of that, now the new parents that are coming up feel that they have to put all these extra guards and these extra uh, protections in in front of the kids, which makes the kids grow up to be whiners, you know, mediocrity achievers. Uh, and, and, and when they achieve anything above mediocrity, they, they demand recognition. And ah, look what I did. Yeah, homie, but you got a trophy because, uh, you know, you tied your shoelace. You, you know what yeah, I'm saying? That, yo, Nobody you, else is doing right, anything. And it doesn't show them any real work ethic or what it is to actually sacrifice and, and obtain something out of pure struggle. There's nothing wrong with that. It sh- it builds character, I, in my personal opinion. It, it truly builds character. And, and these whiners that we have nowadays have, have had everything given to them. Uh, and... To be honest with you, it's really not their fault. It's the people that are allowing them or or enabling them to behave in this way. Right. It's their fault. You guys agree? Yeah. You know what? This is one thing, man. Now, this story going to be a little crazy, right? I was dating this chick one time, right? And she was speaking to this other guy that she was interested in. or You know what I mean? It was something crazy off the hook. Now you're talking about a guy that was an older gentleman that was given everything, like, and I had to check her. I said, you know what, you? What do you mean? Like he was a sugar daddy? No, he wasn't a sugar daddy. He was spoiled his whole life. Oh, so his parents. Oh, did the it. child. The child. As a child and throughout his life, he was spoiled. Mm. And I, I had to check her because, I, yeah, I was a little heated. Like, nah, why you, why you fucking with this dude? Mm. He a punk bitch. Right. You know what I mean? And um, I said, you know what? His parents can stand there and do all that shit for him. Everything that I have in my life, I earned it. You, you did it. You achieved it. Exactly. You Everything. earned it. Mm-hmm. I bought my own fucking cars mm-hmm. after I was 18. My mom never bought me a car at 18. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So ever since I was 18, I've been pounding out whatever I handled it. I handled so it. Everything that he was getting was due to his parents' sacrifice. Right, which I understand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some no, people are no, lucky. No, but, 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 but still, that's... Look, man, regardless if your parents are rich or not, 
there's nothing wrong with going out there and blazing your own course. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, it's it's cool because now it allows you to fail over and over and over and over again. And right. Still and then you can have run the, back to the security blanket of, oh, don't worry about it. Let's go ahead and give you another 200000 and you can start up this bullshit business. Right? Right. But go ahead. But yeah, because uh, true story, I, got a, I have a cousin. His dad doled up. His uh, stepmom doled up. She like a lawyer or something. Mm. They don't. They don't help that boy. They make him get it himself. You see what I'm saying? That's how you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's man. how. I mean, yeah. Okay, certain things I agree. Okay, yeah. Maybe your birthday, I'll get you something nice. But I ain't gonna buy you no fucking car for your birthday no, or no, nothing no. like that. Oh but, man! But come on, you now. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I would yeah. I would make you work because you got to get your hands dirty. And, and my thing is this: the most important. The education. In order to have the resources to send your child and pay that scholarship for college, that's the best gift I think you can give a child as a parent. I agree. Right now, it's up to the kid or the child to, to finish the process. That, right. And say, look, so the, the dad and the mom got to sit there with the, with the kid and be like, hey, fool, this for your education, this is the monetary digital value. This is how much we are going to spend. In the end, if you are successful and you complete and you get whatever bachelor's or, or master's degrees and you achieve that goal, your trip would have been education would have been for free. We will take care of that. In return, your leverage on life against everyone else in the world that has not gone to college is going to be triple fold. Meaning you're going right. to make more money than the individual that only has a high school diploma. And because of maybe lack of discipline, lack of foresight, lack of initiative, a lot of kids don't complete that task. We, on the other hand, we joined the military to go to get that college money. You know what well, I'm we saying? Didn't, we didn't know that at the time. Well, we didn't have Architect. the... Re- we didn't have... Our parents didn't have the resources to send us to college. Right, but check you this. We didn't... Join for college money. We just wanted to, I guess, serve our country. Well, that's true too. But and I didn't say, but the, I didn't say no to the GI Bill either. You know what I mean? Well, I well, signed up right for it. Yeah, because I, I figured, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, right. let's think ahead now. I, I might right. not do twenty. I might get, you know, something crippled in my body, and now I, I might need a, a, a another option Escape in life. Escape route. Right. Yeah. You're quiet, Carol. You, you. Wait, you, I was you, just go ahead. thinking. I think that. Kids are lazy today, too, because when we were children, we were out in the streets, you know, riding bikes. With all the controversy today, kids are in the house more, and they're lazy. I love the childhood, the time that we grew up in. I love it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Man, it was... I re- Listen, <clears throat> I grew up in 20, uh, 272 Monitor Street, Westbury, New York. Adjacent to us was an African-American family, Rod the Canes. Rodney Canes, one of my best friends growing up. It would be myself, my brother, Rodney Canes, and we would be sitting there on a Friday evening. The sun's going down, and we'd have these, you know, the empty Coca-Cola uh, clear plastic bottles, and we'd be going around in the backyard catching um, them lightning bugs. Lightning bugs. Oh. Put some grass yeah. in it. Put, yeah. Grabbing lightning bugs, putting them, you know what I mean, inside these little bottles. The sun are down. We, the sun would go down. We go out to the glow. corner where the light the light uh, corner stand was at. Boom. When we sitting there with lightning bugs in our bottles. Man, it, you, listen, nothing more simplistic. The best times of our lives growing up. Yeah, I used to, I used to do the same thing. I would get like, remember the old school... Uh, glass miracle whip jars mm-hmm. my grandma would keep them for me and my cousin and then you just punch holes in the top so that the lightning bugs can breathe you put some grass in there and we at night we would just wait for that like you said just waiting Fun. boom throw mm-hmm. them in there and they just lightening up man I, I you know for 4th of July we used to have uh, oh. firecracker wars right yeah so you know you, ever, you remember those old school fences the chain link fences, yes, yeah. right. So at the very top, you'd have like a bar, so right? We, we, so we go to like um, one of those homes that you kind of felt were like a shithole and was damn near abandoned. So we would go to their fence line and we would beat on that top pole. Oh, ching until, ching ching, yeah, ching, and then ching Until we took the pole off and we would utilize that as a bazooka holder, right? So somebody <laughs> would sit there hold the pole. 
and another guy will be, be behind lighting the whistler up. You know what I mean? The bottle rocket. Oh, the bottle rocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And, and, and we would use the pole to direct it, and we would be pointing it at people and and shooting it off. That's crazy. And uh, the Roman candles, obviously. Roman you know, candles are yeah. You can hold those, and yeah, you can yeah, hold yeah, them you in, can your hold in your hands and point it at people. And you know, people walking down from the the corner of bodega with a with two uh, two uh, hands full of groceries, and, and they you, get and they run down. Remember, the street they used to sound you, like that. Yeah, because you shooting them up with Roman candles, and they're like, hey, hey. Hey, I'm gonna tell your mama. <laughs> tell your story. Which one? About the sunroof and you and Teresa, your cousin. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my uh my cousin Teresa, man. We went up to um a spot in Youngstown called Wick Park. It was like around the 4th of July, and we was right across the street from a frat house. Mm. And me and this chick, this cat left his sunroof open. We lit the sparklers up, threw them on his front seat. <laughs> so the car is getting smoked oh, up. Yeah, this no that was bad way. as hell, you know what I'm saying? Hey. But I was a young boy. And uh, we hear this guy say, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> now check it out. It was some dude, long hair, white dude. This is back in like the 80s, man. Right, right. And he was... <laughs> Barefoot, so we running through the park. I hid behind the fucking tree, and he caught Teresa, and he was walking with Teresa. Like this dude was like on some movie. She was like, "I know you out there. I got your cousin right here. You got ten seconds to come out." <laughs> yeah, we and he walked us all the way to my aunt's house. My aunt ended up paying the dude for his fucked up car seat, oh, man. man. That's fucked. That's some fuck shit right there, man. Check this out, man. Aunt Cindy. Mm-hmm. Oh, growing up in New York, we we you know we grew up on Long Island. Oh my goodness, man! I'm about to go into some crazy ass stories. <laughs> so we when we moved from Westbury to uh, Uniondale, which was a better the better location, you know what I mean? We wasn't we wasn't in such of a bad spot as, as we were in Westbury. We we lived approximately two to three blocks away from the Nassau Coliseum, right? And, mm. you know, right across from the Coliseum, there used to be a Roy Rogers. I don't, I don't know if you guys oh, yeah. are, are, are familiar yeah. with yeah. Roy Rogers. So the people Love out here in the West place. Coast, the people out here in the West Coast that aren't familiar with Roy Rogers, Roy Rogers is, is like a chain of a hamburger chain. It's almost like a, a jack, jack in the box, if you will, right? And you can go in there, you can get your little cheeseburgers, whatever, boom, 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 bow. But they would have these uh, these pumps where you can get your little casings of mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup. And uh, what we would do is we would stack up on, on mustard and ketchup. And then obviously we put the tops on and we would ride out to the city. You know, uh, not necessarily the city being Manhattan, but we because we were on the we were on the. Uh, the borderline of, of of Queens, right? So it'd take us maybe five minutes, ten minutes. We're in Queens, so we would ride out to these particular spots. I remember man, uh, when I Biggie. I know where he's going with this? Man, one. I remember when Biggie Smalls first the double CD had came out, right? And we're pumping it, and we're with you know I'm I'm gonna bring up another name. This guy's famous on the podcast, Big Ray, Chapter Fifteen. But we're Big Ray, my brother and I, and now we're hunting. <laughs> hunting means that we pack the call w- 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 with these little caps, right? right? Of mustard and ketchup. Somebody about to get it. And some do. <laughs> and, <some, laughs> and some dudes who said that we ain't queen, some dudes riding a bike. Oh. We we slow down next to them and we're like, hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> he looks at us and we start bombing them with these ketchup. And, oh. you know, because what we do is we would we crack them a little we bit. We crack the tops off. Right. So when they hit them, it's, they get they get they get all splattered on, man. So <laughs> we was just going around the Queens, you know, the, 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 the perimeter of the city, just bombing motherfuckers. Yeah. So there was there was this other time where us three again, here we go doing some mischievous shit. And there was this guy who had just parked the car, and we're in, we're like we're stuck in traffic, right? And this guy's got a handful of flowers. Obviously, he's oh. he, he about to go on a date. He trying to smash, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get some." And he's got a white shirt, black slacks. He was like, "Yeah, pretty boy Johnson over here think he gonna get some." Don't he, tell me y'all did him dirty. He, oh, we oh, yeah, we blessed him with the uppercut of his life. So we're like, "Excuse me, <laughs> excuse me." 
uh, do you by any chance know where so and so street is? He walked up to the car. So he walked up to the car. <laughs> <laughs> That was now, not we, nice. We timed it. We timed it to where <laughs> the light, the light will be green by the time um, we splash so them. Do, right? Now. Oh Jesus! <laughs> so he he comes like, as a matter of fact, yeah. Let me tell you where it's at. And we start bombarding this dude with the goodies. Brow, brow, brow. And Pull this dude on. is like in disbelief, like looking down at his shirt, like, oh, you don't fucked up my pussy game, dog. I ain't gonna get none. I'd ever get some. And we la- we rolling. We are we like, ah, and then I, 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 it might have been my brother or Ray who was driving also, and we peel out <laughs> tires are burning, and we are and we are fucking dying laughing, man. Like, you know, you know when you get those yeah. Yeah. deep bellows laughs, cause his face said it all. His face was like, what the I fuck? can't believe this. How could you do this? <laughs> and we're riding all of a sudden. You know when you get those idiot motherfuckers when they got enough time to keep going, but they decide uh, to stop. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a goody two shoes ass motherfucker. Right. And the motherfucker stops. And we we only Three quarters of a block away from the location oh. where we splash this motherfucker, right? Oh, he was probably chasing y'all. Yo, and we sitting there, and we we can't. We either go straight or we go to the right onto a bridge on towards Manhattan, but we can't because the traffic is so heavy. We like, oh shit! The, oh, within within shit is right within ten seconds to 13, 14 seconds, this motherfucker his call pulls up. On the right side of us, and he goes, "I'ma fuck you guys up." <laughs> <laughs> I'd have fucked y'all up. For I'ma show. fuck you guys up. <laughs> Yo, Dude, I, my brother ends up squeezing the car in a small, minute gap between the car in front of him and then his car on the right hand side. He so had he enough space out. to bump out and he just swerved himself onto the traffic that was coming from the left lane. He said, uh, fuck it, we out. And when when we saw that we were able to get away, we just got out the window and started rolling. We was like, you ain't doing a damn thing. <laughs> Yo, but that man would was gonna whooped, turn y'all was gonna out. whoop all three of our asses. He was gonna whoop some ass. That man was he felt violated. That man was gonna whoop somebody's ass. <laughs> Fortunately, it wasn't us that that day. But it, yo, we used to do some some crazy shit. My brother and his crew would be on some other shit. I bet you that man talks about that story till today. It's possible. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. Back in the days when I was a young kid, and uh, well, he probably wasn't a young kid, but back in the days, I remember I was trying to get with this girl, Charlene, and I had my flowers, and these young kids, you know what I mean? They splashed me with the mustard and ketchup. They they don't wrong me. <laughs> yeah, that shit, man. I did that once at a swap meet that my dad and I were at. Threw a ketchup packet on the ground. I thought I was really sneaky. Mm. Stomped it. Oh, it would spray off to the left R- or to the yeah, right. Uh-huh. Ran off. I was standing by my dad. Someone taps me on the shoulder. Oh, they saw you. I, oh no, th- I yeah they. Yeah. I turned around. Uh-huh. A lady and her son covered oh, with ketchup. Oh wow! Yeah, I got my ass whooped that wow. day. Wow, man. So my brother and his crew, of course, Ray being part of his crew because they were, you know, obviously older than me. And I wouldn't hang out with them all the time. My brother and his crew, <clears throat> during the hot summer days in, in New York, you guys recall the water guns, the super soakers? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. So they would go ahead and... Oh, and, and Don't uh, tell me. Yo, listen, they would go up and they'd get their super soakers. And then back in the days in New York... If you went around certain areas of, of, I'm sure there are some certain locations which are still kind of sketchy, red light district, district if you will. Yeah. Excuse me. One in particular was Forty uh, Second Street, but um, but they cleaned that that whole sucker up. As a matter of fact, if you guys watch the HBO show called The Deuce, it's it's on that street. It was nothing but a peep show. Um, a lot of prostitutes on the street, adult oh, bookstores. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, it's it, it very, very, uh, you know, 
the pornographic type of it's it you know just a street of of red light district type thing right so <clears throat> When we were growing up, 42nd Street was still popping live, right? With, with, with the females, ladies of the land of the night. So anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, baby. I right? got a present for you. <laughs> so my brother Ew. and his crew, they'd grab these super soakers and then they go out to Manhattan. They go out to the city. From Long Island to, to Manhattan, you're looking at about a maybe 35 to 40 minute ride. They go to these uh, ladies of the night or these transsexuals or whatever have you. Hey, how much for so and so? Oh, that that'll be you know whatever, whatever. money. All right, hold on, hold on a second, and then the super a person, the, yeah, one of them in the back will bust a super soaker out and blast them in their face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's crazy, and it got to the point where it, it it was like a routine for my brother and his crew to go out there and be like just. Soaking them. Soaking them. Like uh, <laughs> transsexuals, tra- yeah, transvest, everybody was getting it. And apparently... <laughs> One of the pimps uh, came through? No, check this oh. out. No, apparently word had got out that these fools was going around doing this to the... to <clears throat> The prostitutes. To the, pro- to the prostitute crew. Uh, uh, be on the lookout for was uh, distributed. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, be, on, be on the lookout for this motherfucking station wagon with fucking rims going around splashing prostitutes. prostitutes. That's crazy. Did they with really fucking, care? Hey, well, check this out. This one particular Friday evening, I wasn't there, but I heard that they they <laughs> they go up to you know they call a prostitute and the prostitute pauses. She turns around, mumbles something, and a gang of prostitutes come out the oh. woodworks and start throwing bricks at my brother's car. Oh. They got to peel out. Shit. They got to peel out. Apparently, the bolo had went out to be on the lookout for, and and, and the, you know they they couldn't go back there no more. <laughs> the bolo. Hey, I got a story since you brought up the super soakers, man. I remember it was the last day of school. I don't know what year it was. It was in the nineties, and uh. Now, this shit was pretty whack, man. Because motherfuckers, for some reason, used to wear like they fly as shit on the last day. You ain't supposed to do that because you might get in a scrap. You know? I mean, you do that shit on the, like the first day. The first yes. couple days, yeah. right. Uh-huh. Well, and for some reason, these it was females mostly, right? So these cats loaded up they super soakers, right? <laughs> but check this out. They would pull up on the... Actually, what they was doing was pulling up on the chicks that thought they were all at the whole school year. Mm. These guys had Clorox I was afraid mixed of this. with water in the super soakers and were just like... Sh- Clorox? That's but just, They weren't shooting them in the face, they was only on their, their clothes. They were fucking their clothes up. Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. See, I had to hold on now. <laughs> I mean, water, plain water, you, you could clean that off. You can dry that off. You fucking up somebody's clothes. You That's yeah. money. Another level they here. was doing that. Some cats were pissing they super soakers. No. I'm serious. I'm not even lying. Wow. Damn. Yeah, that's dirty with the Clorox, man. Yeah, that's not even fun anymore. Yeah, no, that's just... Well, you're talking about some real greasy <laughs> brothers out there in Youngstown. Them cats don't give a shit because they got holes in their jeans. So they like, I'm about to make yours holy that's right now. Up, man, damn. That is fucked up, right? Did you see this? Yeah, yeah, I fucking witnessed it. Yeah, why would I be... I ain't going to no, lie. No, no, I'm not saying You think I'm lying. talking because I got lips? I, no, I wanted to see <laughs> what was the reaction. I, I mean, I know it's the, mean. Tell the me chicks, the story. The, when you first get sprayed with Clorox, you Details. wouldn't know. Yes. Because it's like plain water. And then once you start walking and it starts drying mm-hmm. and you look like a speckled poodle, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Oh, then Easter yeah. egg shit and stuff. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy, Damn. right? That's how greasy them dudes out there are. What yeah. was back in my day? They still greasy, but... That's this dirty, like, damn. Yeah, man, you don't destroy somebody's clothes. I and mean, wetting them is something, but, you know, <laughs> staying on the same topic of growing up in the time period where we were at... You guys remember a, a game called Risk? Yeah. It was a board game by Parker Brothers. Right. I remember the board game. Hey, it man, didn't... that board game is so addicting uh, or addictive, should I say. We used to play... Risk. It, it, yeah, it was a total of... You can you, you oh, take a risk. Yeah, you play upwards of six people, right? And it was the, the world map of different countries, and you were your own commanding Navigate. general, right? right. 
So you 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 were in charge of a particular army, and your army had like, okay, my I got the blue army, you've got the red, red. yellow, gray, blah blah blah, black, uh, green, and then you would go ahead and and you would start off by putting one soldier on one particular country, right? And then once all the countries were filled, now you could start to add an additional how many troops you wanted to that particular country. Obviously, you would add more troops to a bordering country to your enemy. Right. right? To bulk exactly. up the border of defense, right? Hmm. It would make sense, right? <clears throat> and we would play this thing. We would call it, con- oh, we playing for consequences. We won't play for money. <laughs> we'll play for consequences. So sometimes it would. we had enough individuals where if it was six of us, we could play, hey, we're going to play teams. We're going to play allies. So it would be three on three. So when you when you put your soldiers down, they had to be in a strategic move because oh, I, <laughs> these three motherfuckers is my enemy. Anyways, uh, and, and and I bought I bought the board game for whatever reason. They took out the sixth army. They only have five. And uh, you know, I was telling my wife, "Hey, I'm gonna teach you how to play this, man. And we're gonna get something popping off one of these days with some of the guys and and, and the gals." But long story short, so we would play for consequences, and some of these games would last several hours, hours right? Like Monopoly. The consequences were not told un- un- after oh, the victory. Lord. Oh. And we would do some crazy shit. So name nothing uh, too crazy, but we would be like, hey, look, all right, so we won. We're going to dictate the consequences. Each one of you guys has to eat two full spoonfuls of raw coffee grinds. No. Oh, see, that ain't going to harm you. Yeah, yeah. That, no, that ain't going to harm you. just going to be you. up yeah, all yeah, night. Yeah, or you, yeah, right. Exactly, right. <laughs> or you, hey, you got you to gotta eat. Y'all got to eat half a stick of butter. You know what I mean? Shit like that. The oh, shit was, that might clog yeah, up the yeah, veins. Yeah, fuck but... up your shit up. But <laughs> I'm going to tell you, man. It, it it was on some harmless shit, but it was fun, fun. as fuck. You know what I mean? It was so fun. I miss... I miss those days, and now as much as I enjoyed and I loved when, uh, you know, ColecoVision, Atari, especially when Nintendo came out, remember mm. when the NES came out of with, uh, you know, Super Mario Brothers, Akari Warriors, I loved those games, but at that moment in time, I noticed that we were spending much more time inside the house yep. than outside. Right. We were spending like, hours playing Rygar and Ghosts and Goblins and Kung Ghost, Fu. Yeah. And um, King, of, King of the Ring, Contra. So now, Jacks, right? So, or you will go to your, yeah, or you will go to your your neighbor's house. Bring your game, hey man. Bring the ball. Oh yeah, man. My parents got me this for for Christmas, and I, I loved I loved it, man. But I noticed the activities of us going outside, started and, changing, and like doing some ramble. Like yo, man, we would do. I would be I, listen. I. <laughs> Behind my neighbor's door, uh, behind my neighbor's uh, house was a garage, and I used to build booby traps over there because a lot of these motherfuckers, <laughs> a lot of oh these motherfuckers, was, they was drunks. You know what I mean? So they go behind the garage and they be going down there back there to piss. And that was like my little commando base back in the days when I was a kid. Man, and I used to, oh man, these motherfuckers is pissing in my headquarters. They gonna find out the real. <laughs> so I'd grab like, uh, you know, I'd grab like, you know, those 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 nylon, uh, not nylons, but those. Uh, you remember the laundry bags that we had in when we were in boot camp? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, those, With the holes in the, it? The yes. holes, they made a cloth. I would put bricks in that son of a bitch, and I'd grab, um, I'd grab like these pulleys, and I'd make a three-point pulley, and I'd have the, <laughs> the, the, the bricks tied up to the tree. So when, they clipped, so, when, it, so when they clipped it, it came down on their head, but my timing was, was never right. So the drunks would go back to the piss. They would walk. Two seconds later, the big bag of bricks would come down, but I, I never hit nobody. Damn it. <laughs> because my, of the time. My timing yeah. was off, like the height, right? The height, you know? right. Right. <laughs> so then, and it's kind of hard to do it unless you got and, a test yeah, dummy. And, and then they yeah, <laughs> and then they turn around and they be kicking the bag like, somebody trying to kill me. <laughs> but it, listen, man, I, I, I loved growing up in that era, man. I remember... Yeah. Uh, you know, being with the fellas, playing G.I. Joe. Yeah. I mean, we would do stupid shit like, uh, I remember the, the helicopter. What was the name of the helicopter with Bob, Wild Bill? Wasn't it uh, a Cobra? The Dragonfly, I think it was called, oh, okay. right? And then, you know, we would simulate that the Rattler shut down the Dragonfly, which was, a, the Rattler was a, the Cobra enemy airplane, <clears throat> shot down the 
the dragonfly the dragonfly was a two-seater and then in the back you had dra- you had wild bill which was the pilot and then you had scarlet which was the female in the back scarlet yeah. so also boom so now hey we were similar hey okay we will make these make pretend parachutes for both of them oh we threw them up in the air oh, okay scarlet and they got captured and then ray ray was always on some bullshit because you know he was a little bit you know older than me he was my brother's age and he was like and he would be always cobra Cobra. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so he would say, you, you know, cobra. we kids, man, we playing. You know is, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, we It's like we the playing. hardest dude. Yeah. Of and, course. And then Ray, Ray would say, oh, hey, we got Scarlet. Go ahead, put her in the whorehouse with the other hoes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> With kids, man, when we was like, we would start laughing. It was like, yo, dude, this motherfucker got a cobra whole house. You know? yeah. <laughs> hey, did you you guys ever like ring people doorbells and run off? Oh man, or not, not bang on their doors? Not really, man. Not really, because in our neighborhood, everyone knew us. Well, they knew us too, but <laughs> nah, nah, it didn't stop. Yeah, no. Or egging? You ever go egging? Oh, of course. I used to love going egging, man. I used to prep my eggs. Four months in advance, you I would, would freeze grab, them. I, no, I would grab the eggs and then I would just. Um, and my mom would be like, "Who the hell ate all the eggs?" You know what I'm saying? Oh, so you I let would, them get stinky? Yeah, I would put oh. them. I would put them in. I would hide them in the attic. I would hide them in the attic, and they come, come uh, Halloween night. Them motherfuckers is purple, man. Them things is like ready. Red, red. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Them Damn, things you ready. was a dirty smuggler, man. And that's right. But yeah, <laughs> what about the snowball fights, man? I love them. Oh, my goodness. I man, miss that, did, man. Did your homeboys ever put rocks in the middle no, of them? No, that, that's foul. I'm t- that's- <laughs> you see, <laughs> now you see where these cats is greasy. Yeah, no, nah, that's foul. Nah. Oh, man, I made a I made a perfect pass one time, man. Mm. Uh, I made a nice, not too big, not too small. It was after school. Mm-hmm. I remember the chick I hit and everything. She, we scrapped. Mm. It was like a light, and then some of the kids was rocking across the street. I was like, watch this. It was a big crowd of them, so I knew I was going to hit somebody, right? <laughs> but listen to what I did. This was the grimy part about it. And I used to play QB, so I had an arm on me. I was like, but I didn't know I was a QB at that time because I was still a baby, yeah, you know? Uh-huh. Packed it up. Well, actually, I might have been, but I packed it up. I didn't put no rock in it, though. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. I seen all the chicks because it was a bunch of all the chicks. The twins. Somebody going to catch Kim, it in, in the Kim eyeball. was there. <laughs> Antoine's wife uh-huh. was there. I was like, watch this. To my homies, they was like, what? I threw it, right? Like, I didn't throw it on the line. I didn't throw it straight. I threw it to give it a little bit of air. Yeah. And then I screamed, hey. And they all oh, so they can look. Think they turned. <laughs> and it hit Timlin Lee in her eye. <laughs> and... <laughs> Look, we, they was ahead of us, and I started walking down the other side of the street. She literally ran across the street and then started scrapping me. I beat her ass, man. I gave her one good one, like, Psh. you know what I mean? They was like, why are you beating up a chick? I'm like, man, she, did you see what she just did to me? <laughs> Yo, I did that with my little cousin, Eric, man. This is back in New York. We were having a snowball fight. And he kept popping off the side, the corner of the house because he was using the corner for cover. Oh, right? yeah, that shit uh, is so fun. So I was man. like, man, I see what this motherfucker's. And this is about a good, we've been going at it for about a good two minutes, but I was like, oh, I see what this motherfucker's doing. I'm going to time it perfectly. He man. went, <laughs> so he would, he would, he would peep out that blockhead of his, that big ass noggin. He would peep it out ever so often. And I kind of got the timing right. So I let that motherfucker go. Perfect, man. And he go, he stick that noggin out, and I rocked him right in his eye. And it was a pretty good one because the motherfucker started crying. crying. <laughs> he started no. crying, man. So I'm like, oh shit. Let me go. Let me go calm this kid down before he go crying. And I got, I'm gonna get my ass whooped. My mom's like, why you hitting? Why you beating this boy with fucking uh, snowballs? Yeah, for so real. So I go, I run to him and see he over there crying. I'm trying to hug him up and shit. Yeah, I'm like, yo, chill. What's up? What's up, man? Man, man come on, dog. You a man? You ain't gonna hurt you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he's sitting there, and I got, and I got a fucking wipe, like you know, because he's squinting. I'm like, open your eyes, man. I'm I'm wiping snow out the out his fucking eye. I'm like, damn, dog. And that shit started turning black and blue. I was like, yo, oh. I said, yo, you're going to tell your mom something, but I ain't do shit to your ass. Yeah. Oh, but, hey, motherfuckers used to put their snowballs in the freezers overnight. Oh, that's crazy, yeah, that's man. that's not cool. <laughs> Come on. Might as well throw I did it. Ice cubes. I was just that's like, crazy, <laughs> man. Yo, there was a point yeah. for Halloween where we, we just started carrying BB guns. 
We yeah, we just started carrying BB guns, and then I remember one time um, we was riding around, and one of my homeboys was like, "Yo, man, them BB guns don't do shit." And we ended up one of my other homeboys ended up shooting out the back windshield of a car, Ooh. and we just bonked out. Like, All right, man. <laughs> oh shit, that shit do, do does do damage. Hey, Hell yeah. I got too many greasy stories, man. When we was young, right? We lived right by the freeway down on Wallace Street. Uh, bottom of the south side, like on the way to the north side. And the Hendersons had this hedge that was about, yay high. I'll say a good 18 inches, so it's good cover, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so in the wintertime... We would make snowballs, but it gets worse because we took it to another level at this point. I'm pretty sure. So it's it's right there where the on-ramp is and the off-ramp is on the other side. So the on-ramp, you can't do too much if it's traffic behind you. You got to keep going. So we used to snowball them, right? Like, poof, banging up cars. But now, check this out. I forget who. I think it was my boy, Jameer May. Rest in peace. He was like, hey, this this." Throw bricks. No. Right? No, hey, look. That's yeah. dangerous. Yes. Yeah, we, we and ahead, I remember we threw a brick, man, yeah. and hit the side of this dude's car. It wasn't no cars behind him. This dude stopped and backed up the off ramp. Mm. We was dashing. That I mean, mm. I don't like to tell greasy stories like that. You know, but that, that, Yeah, no, that's greasy, man. We, had, we never did that shit, but we had several accidents around our way because motherfuckers would go... To the uh, to the bridges above oh, highways mm. and would throw, you know, these big ass rocks off the and would cause. The they I remember one time there was a big investigation, man, because one of them caused the death where uh, the driver lost control, ended oh, up yeah. hitting another vehicle, and it was a big fucking mess. We never got that right. I mean, we was always on some mischievous, you know, uh, funny type shit. We never yeah. did anything to like really. You know what I mean? Home or you know, well, just, I didn't throw know. none of the bricks. I did snowballs. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah, but that yeah. was just a bad influence <clears throat> hanging with the wrong friends. You, right, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, I never threw the brick. Yeah, we never did, never did nothing crazy like that. Man. Yeah, that's crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, this uh, this has been chapter thirty six. You know, we've been talking about some stories growing up, and you know what, fellas, uh, everyone listening, uh, eventually. I'm gonna have some more of my childhood friends here on, on the podcast, so we could talk about some. Some real funny stories of us growing up. I want to give a big, huge shout out to my homeboy, Danny Jimenez, man. Guys, Danny Jimenez was a guy who I grew up with in New York. He was originally from Corona, Queens, if I'm not mistaken. I know some were in Queens, and he moved out to Long Island, and him and I became running partners for for many, many, many years, and... uh, we have so many funny stories that we have experienced and, and com- that, you know, just being friends for so long that before I get him on the podcast, we'll have to sit down with him and sanitize some of them because we, <laughs> we, 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 we're not trying to get our asses whooped. Do you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But Danny Jimenez, my brother, we're going to get you. We, Jimenez, as, as Big Ray calls you, we're going to get you on the podcast. Big here Ray. Soon. And uh, my man, DJ Don Q, man, I got to get you on the podcast as well. We got many, many good stories. But listen, Burgers and Carol, thank you once again for your time, guys. Yes, sir. My pleasure. And when are you guys looking to leave the state of California? Uh, Probably around August. The summer. Yeah. The All right, summer guys. So sure. look, what we're going to do is we're going to have you guys as many times as possible before you guys leave, if that's okay. That's fine. Sure. All right. Hey, guys, listen, this has been your host. DJ Architect, on behalf of Burgers and Carol, we'd like to thank you for listening to another chapter. This has been chapter 36. Really, from the bottom of my heart, guys, thank you for listening to the stories. All I am is is a meathead telling old stories, talking about politics once in a while. Okay, and uh, just Yeah, or sports. And just, uh, man, just, just trying to capture something uh, so when we, we pass on, our children and, and their children can have uh, stories and something to listen to their entire lives. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Chapter 36, DG Architect. This has been the chapter of the Architect. DG Architect, out. DG Architect.